when I decided to do Dune, I wanted really to create a new soundscape because those sounds cannot be have been heard before. What makes this film unique is the total bravery, recklessness, and talent. Denis had for this project. A lot of it is being an audience member. You sit there in a theater and you watch it, you go, what would I really like to hear? Denis is a very progressive director. He sees the value in sound being part of the whole filmmaking process. Because in Dune, rhythm is everything. Rhythm is life and rhythm, most important, can be death. Usually sound is in what's called post-production, but Denis recognizes the value of developing the soundscape as he's shooting the film and as Joe Walker, the editor, is developing the cut. So I was collaborating while we were filming. The sounds of the worm chase. the sounds of the ornithopters. All these were being developed in tandem with the filming process. And I wanted as an editor to be able to build that sound world into this film right from the outset and build, bake it in to the cut. If you approach it in that way and you're understanding his story and what he's going for, I mean, that's what we try to do with sound. You're not doing the normal stuff. You're, you're really going after mood and character development, things like that, that would make that come alive. If you want it, make me give it to you. Use the voice. I think the voice was a big challenge because it had to sound like a real thing. It had to sound natural and not like a synthesizer right. effect. We came up with this idea of summoning the voices of their ancestors, which would be brought out as he tried to summon his own voice. Give me the water. It was almost a ghostly voice that could be an ancestral voice of the Bene Gesserit that um, Paul Atreides would be able to tune into as he grows and evolves and experiences spice. But I don't think we ever fully felt comfortable with it till maybe the last few days of the sound mix. We were in process for the longest period of time on creating the voice. Dune is all about the sand and I felt straight away we're not going to be asking a Foley stage to record this. So the first thing I tried doing was sticking a, a microphone underneath the sand and walk around it. And I realized that a sand dune is a resonant body. You can hear someone walking 100 meters away. So we then returned to the desert later right. and made a whole bunch of recordings together. Yeah, we spent an entire day in the desert. Theo, in those, those early experiments, had captured what we found was a, a really novel sound that most people aren't aware of, and that is, is that sand itself in large masses at the right humidity and temperature makes these beautiful whale-like groans. And it m almost makes the desert like it's its own character because it has a voice, and we wanted to bring those kinds of sounds to the movie. So it's really about what does the film need? And that has to be on the top, you know, that, that carries the day. So if you are telling the story, the film should tell you what it needs. Sometimes it's tempting to be flashy with sound. Sometimes it's tempting to make a spaceship the loudest, most powerful one you've ever heard. Our aim was to make it feel as if we had really been there and recorded it as if a, to a documentary crew had a really good sound recordist to make the world as realistic as possible. We can't go and record an ornithopter. We can't go and record a worm. So we have to design those things and that brings an aesthetic to the film. It brings um, a tone to the film and the tone that we were going for was realism. That's a tall order for us to create this fake reality. It was always trying to kind of balance sound design 
and music. You don't really know where one ends and the other begins in this film. I was in need of a composer. I asked Hans Zimmer if he knew Dune the book and Hans answered was that it was a, probably one of his favorite book of all time. It was one of his biggest dream to score Dune. So his answer was a big yes. It was always more about the conversation because I knew the book so well. He knew the book so well. We knew our subject. So now it was figuring out how we were going to interpret something that we truly loved and admired. Hans was experimenting and he did, did tons of experiments, tons of experiments. He, he created even instruments. He wanted really to put himself in danger trying to define a new uh, musical language. Whenever we came across science fiction movies, you'd hear overtly Western instruments, trumpets blaring away and strings, and you go, you know, did this culture really just do what our culture did and build violins and oboes? What's a French horn on Arrakis? And then ended up spending forever making sounds, making instruments, getting people to learn how to play instruments in a different way always bringing new ideas to how to compose music. You know, we feel that everything's been done, but that's not the case. He kept saying to me, those sounds cannot be heard before. And so he created new instruments, a new musical language. All the, the score inspired by the sound of the wind and the sound of the wind on the sand and the rhythm too, because the rhythm attracts the worm. There's a rhythm that keeps recurring in the movie, and that is truly not playable by human beings. But, but because it keeps recurring, it's, it doesn't, it's not random. Do, do you know what I mean? It's designed, it just doesn't, doesn't make sense. You know, it's not supposed to make sense. And it was recording a person in a way that you can't normally record them, then treating each syllable separately and differently. One of the things I love about Hans is that he's part of a long line of German, Austrian composers, and the way that they work of building the smallest organic unit, little cell that could develop into a whole two and a half hour score. You know, the book is about these houses and it's just about royalty and it's about an emperor, it's about where do we come from and where do we go? And it's really just a ginormous watch interlocking with interlocking parts. And so I thought that all the motifs should be able to stand on their own two feet, but they should all be able to interlock and create one giant forward motion machine in a way. Not just a sonic world, but a thematic world. So he's looking for a piece of music that could be used in any context. It could be slowed down, it could be a, a romantic version of the theme, it can be a, a tension version of the theme. It was kind of really magical to see his process. Part of what I love about the score is how unfamiliar it is. What he did, especially with the voice and understanding sort of where the voice comes from and the ancestors and these different cultures and the blending of these different worlds, it's incredibly exotic, it's emotional, it's intense, it is wholly original and very specific to the film. Okay, let's try, let's try one, okay? One, two, three, four. <laughs> The one thing that we felt would be true through any culture would be the voice. We developed our own language and then made those poor singers do truly possible things. Keeping my spot is the hard part. But luckily, Loa Kotler is one of our singers, the great Lisa Gerard, you know, Susie Waters. They're extraordinary perfectionists. When you throw the impossible at them, that's when they get excited. If you 
you surround yourself with incredibly brave, reckless and talented people, they'll lead you into new directions automatically. I always know we're on the right path when somebody goes, this might be the worst idea you've ever heard. I think it's one of the best scores that Hans has ever written. It makes you feel something in different ways that, you know, a more traditional score would fail to do. I want the audience to come with us on this journey to this planet and to this world, which seems huge and vast, unfathomable, and then at the same time realize that it's all about the smallest and tiniest emotion, just like the desert is made up of grains of sand, and the music is just made up of grains of notes. And so rather than it being a massive blanket of sound, this is different. This is moving emotion.